Hey everybody, it's Tiffany. What's going on? Hope you had a fantastic day. I can assure you, however fantastic your day has been, it's about to get better because I bring you the Cecil Birch, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one. There can only be one. Cecil. That's a, the, world, <laughs> the world can't handle more of me. So That is so true. Absolutely true. <laughs> and go ahead and explain to everybody why. Tell us who you are, friend. Um, my name is Cecil Birch and I'm a giant doofus who somehow keeps slipping through the cracks and Tom has yet to come to a census to tell me to not come to TatCon. And nobody uh, believes this that. Is, so this, is my a... tenth, this is my 10th or 11th year. And each, each time I'm like, he hasn't figured this out yet that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't think anybody watching this video will buy that. But <laughs> now that we're done with all of the BS, um, because you are indeed a humble gentleman, but I'm not going to let you get away with that. So tell everybody about your company, what you do, and then we'll shift gears and talk about what you're teaching at, at Tech. All right. So Cecil Birch, I'm longtime martial artist, 45 years now at this point, which kind of you know, hurts me a little bit to admit that kind of stuff. Um, but I've been doing this a very long time. There was never a break in those 45 years. I've been training something all this time. Um, I've just, I just been obsessed with it all my life since I was a kid. Um, and I've trained it at this point, so many different arts and stuff. I tend right now, I tend to mostly focus on what a lot of people refer to as a combat sports, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, boxing and wrestling as sort of my template for fighting. Um, and the only difference is I try to, how do we use that in a modern self-defense paradigm with possibility of weapons in play on either side or both, multiple opponents, and what are the legal ramifications of all that kind of stuff too? And then how to teach it. That's what I've been really, honestly, that's what I've been obsessed with the last 20 years is, okay, I know what it takes to get somebody if you were only to train three four or five days a week and you're going to put five ten fifteen years in no problem but what about most people how do i get this stuff across to most people and that's what i've tried to do pretty much since i hung out my teaching you know my my public teaching i've been teaching since 1987 but i've doing the traveling gig since 2006 ish you know something like that <laughs> well, that is a perfect segue to your class or your, the class that you're known for at TACCON. Your flagship is Just Enough Jitsu, which is exactly everything that you just talked about. So for folks who yep. aren't familiar, tell us about Just Enough Jitsu and all of the equipment folks have to bring and all the experience they have to have and how in shape they have to be and all that stuff for this class, right? Yeah, if you're not a UFC champion, just don't show up. <laughs> For anyone no. who doesn't know, that was total sarcasm, and and Co that's completely. into the great thing about this class. Go ahead. Steve. It's it's the exact opposite. Um, it's something William pushed me to do ten years ago, at the very least. William April, yes. Um, he was like Cecil. You know, yes, we want to push training. We want to go. You know, there are stuff that it would be a good idea for you to do, but some people just can't do it. Time, money, whatever. Now, I don't believe in physical capabilities as an excuse um i anybody can do this stuff i don't care I, i've had people who are paraplegics i've had people with cerebral palsy I've people with down syndrome I, I people with missing limbs anybody can do stuff now does that mean you're going to be a world champion no, no no of course not if you if you're paralyzed you're not going to win black belt world championships in jiu-jitsu but that doesn't mean you can't be a pretty dangerous guy to bad guys. And, and so I don't believe in that excuse, but I do accept time, money, that kind of stuff. Um, and so William always said, well, don't those people deserve something too? And I'm like, yeah, you're, you're right. They do. And, and he was like, so now Mr. Smarty pants um, instructor, come up with something that you can teach in, you know, in an hour and 50 minutes. And I'm like, thanks, William. Appreciate that very much, you ass. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I, I think I did it. So the focus is, and so this is for anybody. You literally, you know nothing about empty hand fighting, fighting, physical capability, physical anything. Doesn't matter. You can show up, 
and we'll work you in. You, everybody goes at their own pace. What are you comfortable doing? If you need to sit out on the side and watch and catch your breath, it's not a, it's not a boot camp. I'm not trying to kill everybody. I want everybody to get better. So we focus on, first of all, how to fall and not, and not hurt yourself. Um, and I think that's probably the least, or sorry, the most overlooked aspect in self-preservation because it's not sexy. You know, you don't see any magazines, articles talking about it. You don't see books talking about it. Um, you don't see tactical YouTube videos, you know, channels talking about it or Instagram. I've done it. I put but, those videos up yeah, and they yeah. tend to be, they tend to be the least viewed videos. However, just but, like pepper spray versus guns, Falling is that thing that you are most likely to need to know how to do effectively as opposed to the sexier stuff. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, even if you're like a professional gun bearer, a cop, military, whatever, you are still far more likely to fall with the potential of seriously hurting yourself rather than getting into a, you know, a John Wick gunfight. And even John Wick knows how to fall, just by the <laughs> way. So all the people who like to have that fantasy. Um so we cover that in a very crawl, you know, uh, crawl, walk, run. Actually, we don't even run. It's all crawl and barely walk, you know, because it's a very, I'm not trying to kill each anybody. It's here's the skills to work for. Um, we look at that. What happens when you're on the ground? You've, you've, you, you've been knocked over. You tripped. The guy pushed you over, whatever. How do you get into a position where you can continue the fight safely? You're not talking about cool submissions and moves, just how not to get worse, how not to lose in that moment. And then uh, if we have time, which is sort of depends, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, how do we get back up to our feet? Nice. And those are the three areas that we, that we focus on. And I think they're the ones that I would argue most people need to know, you know, yeah. Could we go deeper into the actual fighting? Sure. But again, it's like shooting. How often do you actually get to a shooting? Well, how how often have I choked people in the street? Fortunately, for a long time. It's not for a long time. I haven't <laughs> had to do that. But I fall. Certainly, I fall. You know, um, just just those little things. And so, yeah, exactly. um, so the class, and it's been pretty successful. I, don't, I pretty much only teach it at TACCON. And, but every so year we're special. at TACCON. <laughs> what's that? I said, so we're special. Well, yeah, it's kind of like because I, I think it's perfect for the crowd. And I'm like, you know what? If you're going to come to TACCON, you deserve to get a little bit, you know, something a little different that you're not going to get if you see me teaching someplace else. Just a little bit extra bonus. No, it's, um, it's great. I think it's 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 a perfect fit for TACCON, which is why we repeat it um, and why we ask you to bring it back every year. It's just a, it's a fantastic little nugget that can be either – just enough jitsu for folks who aren't able or aren't willing to do this regularly, or it can be that teaser that causes folks, yeah. and I know plenty of TACCON attendees who have done this, that causes folks after TACCON to go and sign up for jujitsu at their local uh, gym. So I get a ton of messages every year at, within the month or two after TACCON. Man, see, so I was so intimidated by doing any kind of empty hand stuff. But after your block, I kind of I decided to step in and I got on the mat at this MMA gym, at this judo, judo place, whatever. And, I, and I'm loving it. It's so much fun. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. Awesome. Which is why you know? we will never tire of this class. It's always popular. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you keep bringing it back. Real quick, before we shift gears to your other class, what do folks wear Ooh. to Just Enough Jitsu? Whatever they're wearing to everything else. Perfect. Whatever All they're right. wearing to, to Gabe White's class, to uh, Tim and Ashton's class, to Daryl's class, whatever they're doing, all that stuff, just wear that. It's not anything fancy or special. Fortunately, oh. thanks to Guy Schnitzler, we usually have some mats. Thank God. Thank you, but God. <laughs> some people are some people are going to be on grass, but it's nice, soft grass. So, you know, it's going to get stained or whatever, but whatever's comfortable. And again, I mean, I'll throw this out there, just having seen um, this class for so many years and heard the feedback from folks, it really is. Cecil and his team are fantastic at making it malleable and customizable to fit just about everybody that that shows up. There's going to be there's going to be really experienced, you know, folks there and there's going to be folks who 
have been terrified of jits their entire life, thought it didn't fit them, and they're just going, expecting to sit in the chairs and watch. Um, and Cecil is a genius at bending the class to meet students where they are. So if you have the slightest bit of curiosity about jujitsu, but you're intimidated or you assume that it's not for you because of your age or because of your weight or because of your, you know, anything, fill in the blank. I don't have a gi. Whatever your, whatever your reason has been, Cecil has wiped all of those <laughs> excuses off the board and you have to go to his class. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. So with that, now I get to do the drum roll because in all your years at TACON, you're now bringing us another new class and everybody knows you as the JITS guy, but you actually are very experienced in firearms as well. And like you were saying earlier, you're really good at kind of talking about how to marry the two and how, mm. um, how combatives or, or, or the combat arts are applicable to an armed lifestyle. And so you're bringing a classroom block uh, about guns and combatives and a historical mm -hmm. kind of survey of how the yep. two um, connect. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was something that came up last year. Um, Chuck Haggard, Daryl Bokey, and I teach a class together. And we were in um, Salt Lake City. And, you know, driving to and from the range, hanging out at the hotel, eating dinner and stuff. And, it, and you know, I love, like, Daryl's classes on, you know, um, uh, habits of successful gunfighters, you know, and as painful as this is to say, John Hearn stuff. Oh, 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 I can't <laughs> believe I just said something nice about him. But you know, and it's on it's, record too. <laughs> I know that's I, I'm publicly for everybody to go to TACCON. Oh, Cecil, you said something nice about Hearn. Um, but but I've always I've loved that kind of stuff because I'm a nerd. I read. I mean, there's that this bookshelf right there is just like the the tiniest little bit of my, of my collection. Um, and so Daryl was like, why don't you, since nobody's else really put out a book or, 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 or an overview of that historic, historical interaction between firearms and the empty hand world, because it's been very, very tied together all up, up until the modern era. Up until the 70s, early 80s, you see the same people talking about shooting are also talking about empty hand stuff. And I, I was like, yeah, people doesn't don't know that because it's never been clear. And then I got really fascinated with, well, why, why did we have the disconnect? Hmm. And I think, I don't know, but I think I've come up with a fairly good theory. Um, again, ugh, it's painful. John Hearn helped me out with this and Eric Gelhaus helped me out with this. And I think I've actually, and I'll present this in the lecture about where we kind of went, where everything was like this, it was together and intertwined. And all that we hit this point and it was like this and the worlds never meet up until, you know, 2000 ish. And you get idiots like me, Craig, Larry, you know, <laughs> who, who start talking about it. But um, it's just a fun lecture. Um, you know, a lot of historical stuff that I don't think a lot of people, well, here's what's interesting. A lot of people are going to go, oh yeah, I know that. I've heard that. But it's, it, it's almost like there's a disconnect mentally where they don't think about the things going together. So I'm hoping that my PowerPoint skills won't be a complete disaster. <laughs> and, it'll be a, and it'll be at least okay to look at, because I know I can talk. <laughs> but let's see if I have good visual aids to go along with it. But I'm really excited to actually do like a, you know, a lecture thing like that. I think it'd be pretty fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be fantastic. And I cannot wait. I know that it's going to be super popular. So you heard it here first, folks. You get not just one slash two chances to train with Cecil on the mats, but this year you also get to hear him talk about history and it just this the subtitle of that class is revenge of the nerds because he just told you all the nerds that came together to make bring this class to fruition and it yep. is glorious <laughs> so yep. Cecil my friend thank you so much for your time I'm excited to see you in Dallas until then you take care you too thanks Tiff as always <laughs>